Okay, so in this video, we will quickly review the notion of the derivative of a function. So geometrically, if you consider the following graph of a function of x, so y equals f of x, and you ask at any given value of x, so take an arbitrary point x, and you ask, well, what is the derivative of the function y equals f of x at this point? Well, if you look at the curve, if it's nice enough, you can look at the point on the curve at the x value that you choose, and you can draw, of course, the tangent line to the curve at this point. The tangent line touches the curve at this point and only this point, and of course we can naturally ask what is the slope of the tangent line at an arbitrary point x, and of course the slope of the tangent line is by definition the derivative of the function which we denote by dy over dx or we can also write f prime of x. So geometrically very simple, take an arbitrary point x, draw the tangent line to the curve at this point, the slope of the tangent line is the derivative of the function at this point. How do we find the slope of the tangent line. Well, if you remember, the idea was to use the limit of the slope of a corresponding secant line. So let's magnify the point of tangency. And the reason why we need a secant line is we need two points on the line. To find the slope of a line, or the equation of a line, if you have two points, you're good to go. As we only have one point, this is non-trivial. But once we have the secant line with our two points, then with the help of limits, we can easily find the derivative. Suppose that I magnify around the point of tangency and it looks something like this. So we have the point x, At the point x, y, of course, will equal f of x. We have the tangent line passing through this point. Instead of taking this line directly, as we only have one point on it, we take a second point. So add to x a small amount. So suppose we consider x plus h. And I look at the second point on the curve. So the value is x plus h, so the y value will be f at x plus h. And now we can pass the line through these two points. And this is a, what's called a secant line as it cuts through the curve at two different points. This is now a secant line, and since we have two points, on this line we can easily find its slope. The slope as always is the change in y over the change in x. So the change in x of the secant line, delta x, is well the larger x value, x plus h, minus the smaller x value, x, so x plus h minus x is simply h. The change in y, delta y, is the larger y value, f of x plus h, minus the smaller y value, f of x. And so now, finding the slope of the secant line is trivial. It is simply delta y over delta x. And if we replace delta y by f of x plus h minus f of x, total change in y over the total change in x, which is h. But we haven't really answered the initial question. We were trying to find the slope of the tangent line. Now we have found the slope of a given secant line to the function. And the idea now is to use limits. If we now let this point approach x, therefore if we let h approach 0, then this point will approach this point, and so the second point will approach 
the point of tangency. But as this point moves closer and closer to this point, as h shrinks to zero, the secant line will be approaching the tangent line, and therefore the slope of the secant line as h shrinks to zero will approach the slope of the tangent line. So all we must do now to obtain the slope of the tangent line from the slope of the secant line is let h approach zero. Therefore, the slope of the tangent line, the derivative dy over dx, is the slope of the secant line f of x plus h minus f of x over h and as we've just said, the slope of the secant line will converge in the limit to the slope of the tangent line as we let h shrink to zero. And there you go. This is how you can find the derivative of any function. You may have seen, if you look here, our delta x is equal to h, so you may see sometimes replacing h by delta x, whichever you're more comfortable with. So limit as delta x approaches 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And that's it. Very simple but beautiful application of limits. One last remark, and that is what is the derivative of a constant? We could do it algebraically with the definition of the derivative from the limit of the slope of a secant line but we'll do it purely geometrically, thinking of, again, the slope of a function, the derivative, being the slope of the secant the tangent line, sorry, at the point of tangency. So if I ask for the derivative with respect to x, say, of 3, well, if you think of this graphically, the function is y equals 3, and this is quite simply a horizontal line. The slope of a horizontal line is 0, so the derivative of 3 is 0. But there is nothing special about 3. Any constant function represents a horizontal line in the plane, the slope of which is always 0. So the derivative of any constant k is equal to 0. So the derivative of pi is 0, square root of 19 is 0, and so forth. And that's it. So always remember geometrically to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. First, find the secant line, find the slope of the secant line, and as you let h, the change in x, shrink to zero, the secant line will approach the tangent line, therefore the slope of the secant line in the limit as h goes to zero will give you the slope of the tangent line, which is known as the derivative.